Hello and welcome back to Star Trek Las Vegas Convention. I am Heather Ferris, your unofficial host for STLV 2019, and I am here with Garrett Wong. I am so excited. We are doing an interview. Thank you so, so much for doing this. You're welcome. <laughs> so before we get started, I just squealed. Okay. So before we get started, remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell, so that way you'll always be notified of our latest videos and live streams. So... Now, I understand that you live in Las Vegas. I do. What is it like, and how long have you been here? Uh, I moved here in 2008-ish. Um, it's been good. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't have to visit anyone. Everyone ends up in Vegas at some point or another, so it's probably the ideal city to live in if you don't want to travel to see any of your relatives or friends, probably. But do they stay at a hotel, or do they ask to stay at your place? Oh, no, they all stay at a hotel. No one, no one stays at my place. So. <laughs> We need to have a line here. <laughs> and then, does that mean you visit like the Las Vegas Strip, or do you gamble or anything? Um, I mean, I go down the Strip if I'm meeting friends or people that are out of town, if they're down there. But typically, if I'm going to go to the Strip, it's to probably go to a restaurant. Um, I do, I do enjoy the game of craps. Um, that's a really super fun game. Uh, but it's more fun if you're playing it with friends. So, I'll tell you, usually, you know. If people ask me to take them gambling, I will do so to give them my, my tips and, and uh, strategies. Yeah. That's really awesome. So you pretty much avoid the uh, strip like the plague then, right? Well, I mean, you try to. It's just because it's so congested and it's so touristy. And, and, you know, when you live in Vegas, you usually live to the, to the right of the strip or to the left of the strip. So you're in either Henderson Green Valley or Summerlin. Those are the two good areas. So... Um, and both Henderson, Green Valley, and Summerlin have all the, um, you know, have everything you need without having to leave that area, right? So, um, that's, so that's what we do. We stay in our own quadrant. We don't leave those quadrants. So, speaking of the plague, have you seen any grasshoppers? They're everywhere. <laughs> I mean, they're not, it's not like you're walking out and you're getting attacked by millions of them. But you see, like, you know, you park your car and you see, like, five or six of them hopping around or flying around. That's, but they're, they're here. Yeah. What is, um, what's the craziest thing a fan has ever done uh, at one of these conventions? Well, early in, the, in my convention career, uh, a woman came up to my table and she said, um, I said, you, do you need an autograph? She goes, yes. And I said, okay, we'll pick one of these photos. She goes, no. Could you sign my baby's head? And I said, your infant child's head with this poisonous Sharpie pen? No. So I, I, I typically, I've never said, you know, I very rarely do I say no to signing stuff. And that was one time where I, I, I absolutely refused. I said, I, I can't do that. She's, why not? I said, because I think that's toxic to your child, right? I don't that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's just crazy. Yeah, it's a little crazy. So, um, speaking of fans, um, what is the most creative photo op you've ever done with one of the fans here? Uh, most creative photo op? Uh, I typically, you know, I used to do really just plain photo ops like most people. And then I saw, I saw some other actors doing some interesting things. Um, <laughs> Paul McGillian, my friend from Stargate Atlantis, he... <laughs> So I just look at his photos. There's like one where he's he's cradling one fan like a baby. Another one they're they're piggyback on his back, and he's you know. And I said, "Oh my god! Like, what the heck?" And he's like, "Oh, they love it. They love this." So then every time I do a photo op, I try to do, you know, some type of pose or whatever, right? I mean, the funnier ones are when you when a couple comes up to take a photo, and and I'm down on one knee like I'm proposing to the wife, and then the husband's all jealous, and then sometimes they want the reverse. I'm on one knee proposing to the husband and the wife is like mm, <laughs> jealous to the side so yeah so those are pretty funny I oh like i those. love that yeah <laughs> now getting to um deep space nine everyone here knows that you were ensign kim for the entire series mm -hmm. how do you feel about that about not being promoted you should have been captain at least number one well <laughs> You know, life goes on. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's tough. I mean, if you think about it, he should have been promoted. I asked somebody in the U.S. Navy if you're a ensign, and, and we have to make we have to clarify this. I mean, ensign is a more obscure naval ranking, right? Um, it's the most junior officer, so he's not like a 
he's not like a grunt or a private in the army. He's 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 still an officer. But <clears throat> I asked someone in the U.S. Navy, if you're an ensign, seven years later, what are you? And he said, uh, Lieutenant Commander, just about Lieutenant Commander. I said, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, I know we all wish we could see it. Whenever I talk to people, everyone I talk to says, he should have been promoted. Yeah. Like, what the heck? <laughs> now, out of all of the characters that you have played for your entire career, what was your most favorite one to play? Hmm. Um, wow. That's a tough, that's a tough call there. I think I like the one that I did after, right after Voyager ended. Tim Russ Tuvok called me up and said, I'm directing an independent Star Trek film. Are you interested in being part of this? And I said, absolutely not, because I, I was so, I needed a break. He goes, no, 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 you're playing a character completely opposite of Vincent Kim. I said, okay, sign me up. So playing that role in uh, of God, Star Trek of Gods and Men was pretty fun. You get to play the bad guy, you know? So where can people find that if they want to see that? Uh... That I think if you go to just just Google Star Trek of Gods and Men, I think you can find a copy of it. It'll, you can watch it there. Okay, awesome. You guys gotta check it out. Yeah. And then um, one more thing, and then I'll let you go because I yeah. know you gotta get running. <laughs> so um, let's see here. I had so many questions. I could probably keep you here forever. Well, okay, you got a couple more. It's fine. <laughs> go for it. What um, what projects are you currently working on at the moment? Well, I took a break from Hollywood, so I left in 2005, so I just came back in 2019. So I took a 14 year old break, 14 year break. Um, in that time, I've only done stuff for friends and a couple of voiceovers. I did a voiceover for American Dad. I did a few other random things and then now with the new manager um hopefully in the next year or so i'll be you know nailing something good <laughs> hopefully we'll see well, i can't wait to see you in whatever you play fingers crossed <laughs> fingers crossed positive vibes, positive vibes. Positive vibes. <laughs> and then um let's see I love your impressions. Every time I watch you in the panels, the impressions are so hilarious and you're just, I am laughing. I know I'm going to always see a good panel when you're talking. <laughs> good. So what is, um, what is your favorite impression to do and do you like doing impressions? How did you? Uh, I grew up um, idolizing uh, Rich Little, the master impressionist, so that's pretty much where all that came from. Um, from a very young age, I've always impersonated friends of mine, friends of the family, relatives, um, done all the different accents of the world, speaking English, right? Uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as Trek is concerned, my, probably my go-to accent is is George Takei. I mean, I just I really enjoy speaking like George because it's so fun. You go up and you go down, and you go up and you go down. <laughs> oh my! So. You are just really good at it. You have a natural talent for Thank that. You. So is Brent Spiner. Brent Spiner is the other guy that can do accents, so uh, impersonations. He does a, He does a great Patrick Stewart. So I'll, I'll give him kudos. Do you guys ever find yourself just doing imperson impersonations of other people and the, just talking to each other and the different people? No, not really. But I would like to sit down and, and maybe have uh, you know record myself and, and Brent Spiner just going through all all every impersonation that we can do, which would be pretty funny, probably like a like a I don't know sort of like a dance off but instead of an impersonation an impersonation off you know if that can if, that's a tongue twister <laughs> well i know what panel they need to do next year next year we need to have that panel yes yeah, that would be a go. fantastic panel yeah. to see and something First different too long. you never see those guys on stage together right yeah. Yeah. and it would just be hilarious it i mean be i would be rolling it would be very funny <laughs> i agree and then do you have time for one more or sure. do you need to get going go okay cool um Two, it's sort of one question, but it's two questions in one. Yep. What is um, on your playlist right now, and what is your favorite TV show at the moment? Uh, favorite TV show at the moment? Um, oh, my God. Uh, Jesus. Well, I'm watching season two discovery right now so i'm i'm like i say that's my favorite tv show the, but i've been watching that so i you know i enjoy that anything trek um i like orville i like anything sci-fi right so i'm a big sci-fi nerd only 10 percent of all your star trek actors are sci-fi nerds everybody else is just an actor so don't expect them to know names of episodes but i'll know the names of episodes um and then on my playlist um it's uh, entirely it's all it's all electronica i've been listening to electronica probably since like 98, 99, so it's been a good 20 years, you know, that this has been going on. Um, mostly Dutch DJs, Armin van Buren, um, I like Tiesto, at least early Tiesto, later Tiesto is a little too commercial, but um, but yeah, 
um, I'm trance specifically if you're going to say what type of electronica there's so many different variations of electronica right now um, but i would say trance music is, pro is probably all my playlists on my phone right now so okay and then um when you watch tv do you feel like you're working or can you have fun when you watch it no, uh, i have to watch it more than once so okay. the first time i watch it i watch it with a critical eye and then the second time i can i can sit back and relax and enjoy it for as a fan right yeah well, thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Thank you for the interview. I really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. We're thank you for watching, you guys. Uh, hold on, hold on. First oh. of all, high five. And now sci-fi. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, she can't I can't do, do it. Oh, okay, oh, there we go. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>